Hi, everybody. You're all very welcome. My name is Albert Baker. Um, I'm here in Dublin, Ireland. I've got people from all over. Uh, it's great to have a crowd here. So I'm going to kick off today's workshop. Okay, so I'm COO and co-founder of Donalto, and we're here to see positioning intelligence in action on the Donalto Cardinal platform. So we're going to get right into it. So positioning intelligence as a term, what is it? So for those of you not familiar, Donalto's positioning intelligence really means locating and analyzing people and assets above and beyond a dot on the map. So this is digital awareness for the modern day. We've, we've got quite the panel today, and we also have a live demo, and we're going to see some uh, real-time action on the platform as well. So I'm really delighted to be joined by Pat McGowan, also from Donalto. He's our industry expert. He's based in Michigan, and he has over 30 years experience in bringing to life location solutions in oil, gas, mining, heavy industry, and beyond. So Pat will be giving us some insight on real-life use cases we're not here to talk about hypothetical problems and solutions. We, we want to see how these solutions are actually rolled out and used. We're also very lucky to have Alex Guscott from Abbey Way and Actility with us, who are one of Donato's key partners. He's based in Nashville, and he'll be able to explain how best-in-class hardware is absolutely necessary to power these positioning intelligence use cases. So, for example, the Abbey Way Smart Badge, which I have in my hand right here, now, this is a LoRa device, long battery life, certified for hazardous areas. All of this is really, really key to make sure that we get the location data up to the platform that we need. So you're all very welcome. We have a nice mix, I think, of end users, integrators, and partners. So we hope we'll get lots of questions. Please do stick them in the chat, in the Q&A, um, and we'll get to them as we go on, and obviously during the demo as well. So let's think about tracking. So in reality, if we're just tracking, we end up getting swamped with lots of location data from people, pallets, materials, large and small. So the question really is, how do we wrap up this data, distill it, and make sure our goal is clearly in sight? For example, keep my workers safe, find my assets, count my assets, understand the flow of my, of my assets, and get a helicopter view of my operational processes. Which can, be, uh, which can be data poor. So if location data is going to power these improvements that we need in our day-to-day -day processes, it's the insights that are going to do it for us. So where do we start? So we've lots of choices, and a lot of this is quite familiar to our audience today, but just as a backdrop, you know, battery-powered wireless tags, they're, they're the norm today to locate our people and assets, but from ultra wideband, which is highly accurate indoors with dense networks, all the way to GNSS giving us 10 meter accuracy on a truck on a highway. There are considerations for each use case. So really, you know, there, each use case needs to be taken uh, on a case by case basis, broken down, and there are often blends of radios, in fact. So if we're to go from an indoor environment, which a person or an asset often will, to an outdoor environment. This should, this should be a seamless journey on the platform of a single dot or a single set of location data. So the platform. We see there are six building blocks, foundational elements, which are needed for all of this uh, data to come to life. First one being configurable dashboards. So as I said, how do I aggregate this data to give me some KPIs? some headlines, some red, amber, green, some stats to make sure that my process is on track. In reality, if I'm getting thousands of um, tags which are reporting every 30 seconds, then it's very difficult for me to actually understand what's happening. Fully documented APIs mean that we can talk to other systems that are already involved in these processes. So can the location data generated by Cardinal power these processes by hooking into the ERP system, for example? Data replay is key to understand an issue or some journey of, a, of, of an asset to understand what's happening. And Pat will go through the, the navigator and, and pathfinder application on that. It has to be scalable. As I said, we can have tags reporting at 30 seconds. We can have thousands of these. 
uh, we can have thousands of these tags and so it's a lot of data to process. Security is absolutely key on any IoT platform as everybody knows. And so we leverage best in class partners like AWS to make sure that everything is secure, encrypted and safe. Um, front ends are very, very important. They need to be easy to use. And again, it's not about people staring at graphs and charts and maps all day. It's about making sure the data is, the location data is used correctly. So the plan today is not to really uh, spend too, many, uh, too much time on the slides. We want to get straight into the demo and see the platform in action. So I'm going to hand over to Pat. He's going to give us some backdrop on use cases. Then we're going to hear from Alex and then we'll go straight over to the app. Thanks, Albert. Um, welcome everyone uh, to this uh, event. And um, as Albert had said, I have a vast experience in actually deploying and working with partners around the world in the oil, gas, and construction and in, in energy industry, as well as uh, aerospace defense and manufacturing. You know, it's, it's one thing that I have seen uh, that goes across all of these different industries in the world, whether you're indoor or outdoor, um, you're working in the power generation or mining, or you're working in the manufacturing facilities. <clears throat> We're always looking at uh, primarily uh, worker safety. I want to know who's here. I want to know that you're safe. I want to know that you're actually in the field uh, and you have everything you need to do your job, whether it's tools or uh, equipment, what have you. You know, when we get to workers on site uh, in a traditional manufacturing facility to a construction site, we have direct and indirect labor. So I'd like to know uh, the direct employees are there. And then when we get to indirect workers, I want to make sure that there's an active work contract that they're performing underneath. And do I have enough of these indirect workers to perform the tasks that are given on a daily basis? With the advent of advanced work packaging and what have you, uh, we look to find out where the workers are going to be deployed in the work phase, whether it's indoor or outdoor, and make sure that we can get the project and the tasks done in a timely fashion. So we're looking at that. When we're talking about workers in the, uh, uh, the workplace, we look at our uh, e-mustering. One of the critical things that we look at with workers is if something goes wrong and you're outdoor and you have uh, tornadoes, or bad weather or lightning or what have you. And matter of fact, we're entering a tornado season here in the States right now. And if bad weather comes along, I wanna be able to notify all of the workers that they go to the mustering points. And it's an electronic digital version of moving everybody and, and making sure that everybody's in a safe spot. If for chance somebody is not showing up at the e-muster shop, you would be able to take, uh, I'm looking for Albert as an example, his badge would say ABC123 and it's not at the e-mustering site. With the Cardinal software, we could actually go in, look at the site and see where Albert is or where he was last reported. Uh, if there's a situation that, you know, he could be in a man down situation or need help, um, the e-mustering is gonna give us the ability to locate him and render assistance. Effectively, we want to make sure everybody's in the same spot together. The other side of it is we have applications that are out there right now that we typically are using a geofencing. And this is very important to the connected worker safety areas. And the reason why it's important is if you're in an indoor and an outdoor facility, it's the same thing. We want to make sure that the workers are out of harm's way. What we're doing is providing a digital awareness. We're, we know where that badge or tag is. And if something happens inside the facility and a drum of chemicals hits the ground and it's spilled, we wanna keep everybody out. We're able to actually create a geofence grid and block out that area, alert all workers that are in that space to stay away at a safe distance. We can also trigger the right people in maintenance or safety to say that there's this area that needs to be cleaned up. We also have outdoor situations where we have controlled environments where we need geofencing. There might be overhead issues with cranes and what have you. So we're gonna take that badge that Albert has and 
the workers would be wearing that. And this is going to be able to signal them to stay out of that area. It also, on the other hand, would allow the proper people, supervisory, management, foreman, what have you, to let you know people are in the wrong area so you can go out and correct the situation. From that point, we actually work onto the supply chain. We typically call that upstream, downstream supply chain. Uh, we want to know what's going on with the materials. Um, typically on a construction site, let's say, you're going to have stuff that is going to be manufactured off-site, fabricated off-site. So what we want to be able to do is give visibility to the project owners and shareholders that whatever's being built off-site is going to be on time and it's hit all of its quality points. As it's being shipped, we want to know that it has gone into the ship status. The whole idea is, is that we are going to secure the chain of custody. And by doing that, we want to identify it every step of the way to know that it's going to hit on time. When it is received on site, that we can do a site inspection if we need to take pictures of it. We can port all of that information into Cardinal and you'll be able to see that, yes, it is here. Yes, it did pass inspection. Yes, it is ready for consumption. Now, this is indoor or outdoor. We have situations where in manufacturing, you may be looking for a die inside of a, a large, large facility. One of the major automotives that has two initials, G and M, they have uh, a propensity of having in their stamping plants thousands of dies. When you're not able to find a die, you're basically shutting down a press. So in the axiom of time is money, to be able to find these things and locate them in a moment's notice with a, a product like Cardinal and an Actility tag, it gives you the availability to not only keep things moving along uh, properly, but it also feeds a predictability model that am I going to be able to make my time frame, uh, build the products, whatever it is, keep the labor on track and getting things done. These are all things that, you know, basically uh, you've heard of a situational awareness. Um, we're feeding a digital awareness. We're taking all of these uh, technological advancements, tags and what have you, and bringing all that information, putting it into a common platform so you can view it. Um, you're gonna know your material location, the availability, uh, shift schedules. Uh, you'll have full material visibility. You'll be able to look at receiving and do uh, you know waste and overage and shortage and damage reports. All of that stuff is gonna become available. Uh, maybe pass just you? just a question yeah. just stop it for a second so there are scenarios aren't there where basically personnel may need to be tracked as well as assets on the same side so there's a couple of systems at play there and yes. how you correlate the two right right it is and what's interesting is is that what we're able to do uh that is unique to the uh business world that i've seen is that we're able to transition from indoor to outdoor and back and that's a seamless transition there's not a whole lot of uh, operations that can do that. So for our end users, our systems integrators and what have you, and partners, uh, we give you the ability to actually transition and track indoor and outdoor, whatever the asset is. So there's no dark spots or no blind spots in the, um, in the operations. And you know, at the end, what we're looking is in improving business operations. You know, I said time is money, but uh, you think about it, if I am looking at this picture uh, in the upper left-hand corner picture of a laydown yard and somebody moved a pipe spool and I need to go and find it, and I send three guys out and their unburdened rate is $56 an hour and it takes them two hours to find out and figure out where it is. The other side of that spectrum is I've got material handlers, I've got a crane, I've got welders, I've got uh, fixture fitters, everybody's standing there. There could be a dozen people waiting for this one piece. So it's it's not the cost of the tag, it's the cost of not having the tag to be able to figure out where it is and put it into the work face and keep the projects on schedule. I know in some industries, they, uh, they offer liquidated damages that if you are not on schedule, that there is actually a penalty, especially in a construction. In automotive manufacturing, the same thing happens is if you can't provide that material to the line side, there's a penalty per minute that you're down. So it's painfully uh, obvious that we need to make sure that we can identify where things are in the field and get them to where they need to be so they can be consumed. So again, it's keeping projects on schedule on time 
and on budget. And nothing will kill a budget more than wasted labor. Next. This is the e-mustering, uh, and Albert's going to actually show you a demonstration of it. But basically, what it shows you, it depicts the actual site uh, in the field where it is at. We've got that uh, illuminated light red zone where we've actually been able to uh, cordon off an area to keep workers out of the area. We can identify on the bottom portions of that, you can see uh, different people that are working in that area. We can see their status. If it's green, everything's okay. If they're getting close, it could become amber or yellow. If there's a situation where they're in that area, it turns red. All of these screens on the e-mustering screen of Donalto are user configurable. So you get the same data, but you could actually uh, fashion it the way you would like to see it. Maybe you have a, a, an operation system, whether it's an Oracle or Hexacon Smart Material or Aviva or you know, uh, Autodesk or whatever, even if it's a homegrown, you may like to lay it out to your own uh, satisfaction. So we can give you the capability of doing that. But this is all real-time information. You're gonna be able to get a Vista into the workspace, knowing not only where your workers are, but where your assets are. Where's the, the welder that you're looking for right now? Where's the skid steer? Everything can be identified in the workspace. Um, you know, the benefits are obvious. Um, you know, you've got jobs are hard to come by and you got to keep them on track so that we can eliminate a layer of stress. That'd be great. Um, you know, everything's at your fingertips. You can use your mouse to find out where is, everything is at. The interesting part is the power of Donalto being able to harvest all of these dissimilar technologies. We actually allow you to have a single pane of glass. Before what was happening is if you had one technology, an RFID or an ultra wideband or a BLE tag, you might have three, four different screens and applications going. What we've done is eliminated all of that for you. Uh, Cardinal actually aggregates all of that data that's out there presents it on one screen. So when you bring it up, you're able to look at your whole landscape of technology out there with one screen. And as Albert's gonna show you, it's, it's very easy for us to set up. We did all the heavy lifting. So we've taken care of all those interfaces and as new interfaces and new technologies come along, that's Donalto's position in the workspace is we take that load off of your back. We put it all together, we test it and we deploy it. Next. The Asset Pathfinder is really a cool uh, application. Um, this is a, a, a mobile uh, uh, application interface that can be used on your smartphone, whether it's iOS or Android. And what it does is gives you the idea of from looking for a product in the field, on the work site, all the way to the other end of the spectrum where we were actually looking at the left-hand picture, there's a manufacturing facility. That could be in Portugal. And then as it gets shipped, we're gonna see down in the lower right-hand corner that it was actually put on a ship and moving through, transitioning through this whole uh, series of events. Now, depending on how granular you wanna get on it, we have GNSS, GPS, all the way down to a finite uh, finding inside of a facility. That's the, uh, the cool part of Donalto's Cardinal platform and being able to accept all of these different technologies, depending on how you wanna look at it and how granular you wanna get, um, we can give you that. Albert, real quick question. What is the, what is the highest granularity that we offer? Uh, through the Cardinal platform, how close can we actually get to something? Yeah, so in, in, like in terms of indoor, there is a need for ultra wideband in certain cases, and this really does get you down to half a meter or better. You do need anchors, you need quite a few of them, they need to be cabled, but for those really, really high value assets or critical use cases, sometimes that accuracy is required. Other times they need five meter accuracy, you may use a different technology, but ultra wideband is very, very powerful. And um, we have partners in that space too. and and um, that would be the solution whereby you get the highest accuracy that we see. Right, and I, I have found on different projects that you can have a variance of resolution. So we may want to get sub meter accuracy uh, inside of a facility to do audit traceability or what have you, but 
as Albert was saying, you know, five meters, three to five meters, when things are larger than a bread basket or bigger than a bread basket, you just need to know the location. So if it's outdoor and you're in a mining site or you're in a construction site, what have you, uh, typically we'll have areas that are being cordoned off into zones and you'll know what zone it's at. And if it's a big enough thing, you'll be able to be directed right to it. So this gives you the uh, directional, just like your GPS in your vehicle, as you're heading toward it, you know, what the traditional GPS in your car is, is you put your address that you're going to. Well, how this is all done in Cardinal, the address happens to be the part number you're looking for of the asset. You put that in there and it will guide you directly to it. So there's, uh, there's no wasted time or effort. Next screen. This is a, a, a common lay down yard for construction, oil, gas, mining, where everything um, is stored outdoors. Uh, it's literally an outdoor warehouse. And typically what happens with the asset navigator, we are gonna wanna be able to show you how exactly you're gonna get there. The interesting thing about this picture right now is that pin shows you where that product is. This is gonna give you a, a walk path on how to get to it. The important part here is, is that in the busy days that we have out there, people will go ahead, put a team in there and they may pick up one of the larger pipe spools to gain access to a product that's behind the pipe spool. So when they pick it up and they move it over to that upper left-hand corner, because that's the only available space and the hurry and scurry of this activity, they may not register where that product is. So what's gonna end up happening is the system's gonna update and when you get your next pick list from whoever your provider is, it's going to give you the new directions to that new component where it's put at. Next. This gives you an idea of what this looks like. Uh, it's a common um, theme to not only have your site depicted this way, but to be able to know where not only your labor is, but to know where your materials are, to know where your tools are. And if you're able to look at the the dashboard here, uh, pull up a, a, an actual worker that's indirect and you're gonna tie him to uh, a Miller TIG welder. We can put these two together, find out what zone this stuff is, couple the equipment and tool to the worker, get it out on site. The corollary to that is, is we could track the walk path of a person to find out if he did get into harm's way, where did he make the wrong turn? The other side of it is we can find out if we're talking about a welder and you're running three shifts a day, if the welder went from zone uh, one to zone three, um, what was its path? We can also do a history on that piece of equipment as well. Did it ever make it to maintenance to make sure it was maintained properly? Again, depending on how granular you wanna get, the Cardinal platform and all of the technologies out there will give you everything you need. Next. Todd, just, just on that one, like I can see, you know, um, those folks who run these yards, they can have tens of thousands of assets right on these yards. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. Am, I, am I tagging every single asset? Am I tagging a, an asset that's only over a certain dollar value? How do I make sure the process, you know, is improved if I have to really put out well, all this? That's a really good question. And in construction, for example, I did a project at Bechtel and uh, they actually had 83,000 tagged pro project, uh, products inside of that uh, system. Now that's an awful lot of tags, but the thing is, is this was a power plant that was being built and every one of these things were unique. So they had a unique ISO drawing and I could not mix them up. The other items that are out there that were pretty much homogeneous would be things like hangers, fasteners, what have you. So instead of putting something like a tag on an RFID tag or a PLE or ultra wideband or whatever the tag was, which is required on the high value items, um, they would put something like a barcode or, or a, a, a data matrix QR code or what have you on it. So the interesting part is, and what makes this question really good is we've been talking about traditional uh, tracking methods right now on technologies, the digital awareness, the ultra wide bands, the LoRa's, what have you. The system can also input uh, barcode and 
you know, data matrix QR code. So a lot of companies and a lot of systems out there are relegated to items that are really not that, uh, you don't want to put an expensive tag on it, a barcode would work great or something of that gotcha. sort. Gotcha, gotcha, okay, thanks. Next. Okay, so there's some nice images there of the platform, so I'm, I'm eager to uh, go over there, but it's great that we have Alex here and he's going to give us a run through Actility, the hardware, and uh, off you go, Alex, thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Alex from Actility. I'm very happy to be on this webinar. Um, and I think we can go to our slides, to the next slide. So I'll quickly talk about Actility and Abbeyway, the two companies I represent on this webinar. Uh, Actility is the maker of ThinkPark, Enterprise, and Wireless, the probably most popular uh, LNS, Lower One Network server out there. There are a few things that differentiate us from the uh, rest of the, uh, of the market landscape. And you can see a number of them here, but the one that I would like to highlight the most is the ecosystem. Uh, Actility and ThinkPark as an LNS, uh, our strategy to the market has always been working with partners. You know, our part, the LNS, is that we can ensure that uh, your lower one network functions correctly, that downlinks, uplinks, everything is sent um, in timely manner, everything is received to your application, everything is forwarded back. What Actility and Abway doesn't do is that we do not do applications, platforms that allow you to build logic, that allow you to um, show the results, show the actual location of your assets on the map. And that's why we have, we're so happy to be in this partnership with Denalto, who can complement lower one with other technologies and make sure whatever critical location you're looking for, you will be able to have that location identified and the logic of your plat, uh, the, the, the logic of your business processes being uh, developed there. Uh, I suggest we go to the next slide to keep it quick. There is just some more information about ThinkPark. So once again, just to remind everyone, ThinkPark is a lower one network server, something that allows you to connect gateways, devices, and for this network to work properly with downlinks, uplinks flowing through the network. We are, pro we are one uh, probably the first company that started working with lower one uh, on this scale, building our own LNS, uh, integrating different hardware, different gateway manufacturers. We are hardware agnostic. We can work with so many different manufacturers and you really don't have to worry about having different types, different gateway manufacturers uh, installed in your network. It will be all easily, uh, easily manageable uh, and it will be identical in terms of management, uh, no matter if it's a curling gateway, if it's a tectalic gateway, if it's any other gateway that you're installing. And as you can see from this slide, we, we are growing quite fast. Probably we are, in terms of number of active devices, we are probably number one. Of course, this is not, uh, since we focus primarily on uh, private networks, um, the cover, uh, our coverage may not be the biggest out there, but in terms of active devices, yeah, we are probably the champion. Um, just a, a quick note there as well, uh, we have, uh, as our LNS has been originally developed for carriers, ISPs, nationwide companies, uh, and it is being actively used today we can make sure that what you're getting with, uh, with our network server is carrier grade solution, right? It, uh, the reli reliability is there, um, everything keeps on working. And as you can see in this page, uh, in this slide, uh, this kind of also highlights the fact that we've been <laughs> one of the earliest founders of the LoRa Alliance together with IBM and Centec. So, um, yeah, uh, th this is going pretty well. Uh, next slide, please. And of course, uh, I would like to mention that Actility, we are a global company 
We work with many customers and partners around the world. Uh, the big benefit of working with Activity is that we are your gateway to the global market. And next slide. So this is the diagram I use most. I, I use most often to highlight the uh, I, I, IoT uh, lower one framework. Right, what it looks like where you've got devices all the way on the left hand side you've got gateways that transmit data from those devices and back to the devices and the gateways then for this data to follow those uplinks uh to the think park uh, network server uh which then forwards the data to the application, such as the Nalto Cardinal platform that we're looking at right now. We have a whole bunch of features that I kind of don't have time to go into this time, this webinar, but to um, just to name a few, uh, ThinkPart Exchange allows you to roam into third party networks, be that Evernet, be that Helium, be that Senet. Uh, we can utilize their coverage as well and have our devices that have been provisioned on our platform and our network server roam into other networks. Hence, for partners like Denalto and end customers, what this gives is, right, you have your own private network with a gateway and some devices at your site. And everything works great. Uh, everything is reliable. You're able to determine the position. But then at some point, one of your assets goes missing and you're unsure where it is and it has been it was a pretty expensive thing that you're kind of want to find with think park roaming we can enable roaming on that device that got lost and try to pick up signal from it to pick up and position uplink from it maybe with gps or something else other technology and find it somewhere else where if there is coverage right if the device is currently located within the coverage of our partner networks such as Helium, Senet, Evernet, and many others. Uh, next slide. And now we come to the second company that I represent. You might have seen that it says Actility and Abbeyway. So Abbeyway is a different entity. It is owned by Actility. And Abbeyway is a hardware manufacturer special that specializes in tracking devices. The devices come in different flavors. Uh, we have the very small micro tracker. And I think we can go to the next slide. There will be more information about them there and better images. Perfect. So uh, I'll go, uh, I'll start with the industrial tracker. This is the biggest tracker out there, has the biggest battery life, will last you pretty long, uh, three years on battery life in motion tracking mode. Uh, there is the compact tracker, which is slightly smaller. Uh, I would say that the casing is a bit better. And those two trackers, the industrial and the compact one, are designed to be placed on assets, not people, <laughs> because they're quite bulky and uh, hard to carry around. At the same time, we do have the other two trackers, such as the micro tracker and the smart batch. Those are smaller devices. So I actually have them here with me just to quickly, hopefully the background will not eat them out. Uh, you have, you can see them right here in my hands. And those are much smaller devices that are designed to be carried by people, by workers. They have an LED light, a buzzer, accelerometer. They can detect motion. They can detect shock. They can detect crit angle changes so many things and of course they have the feedback so actually the worker in the field if something happens they can press the button and it's configurable how many presses it takes to it's, so many, it's, it's just as you described there alex there's so many things that it can detect and all these different data points that it can send up to the cloud so if i'm a user i only need one or two of those you know that's a lot of data for me to process and kind of Indeed, that would take a different webinar to cover this all. Uh, just a quick uh, last uh, remark on this one, that everything you can see here, 
uh, some, most of the trackers are ADEX certified. So if you have dangerous environments, explosive environments, we're good to work there as well. Next slide, please. And if I could add, that's really important in the marketplaces that the, the Donalto and Actility Abbeyway group uh, services, because we got a lot of oil, gas, mining, chemical plants, even inside of manufacturing facilities, they'll have cleaning solutions, what have you. So the request is out there for that certification. So this, this is really great for the use cases in the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, just to add a few things here uh, to this slide, right, to highlight it, uh, the, we, we are able to determine the location of the trackers using different technologies. The most obvious one would be GNSS with GPS and other uh, satellite constellations, GPS, uh, well, GNSS. We also provide the low power GPS, which is our proprietary technology. It's, it allows you to uh, use GPS with slightly less accuracy because we're looking at less, uh, we're not picking up as many satellites, uh, but it will save the battery life on your device for much longer. We also can do Wi-Fi geopositioning and BLE geopositioning. Um, those are the ones, especially BLE is uh, something that you would use indoors uh, rather often. And if we go to the next slide, you will actually see the differences uh, between the different technologies out there. This slide, what it doesn't tell you about is how we combine different technologies with what Cardinal Platform and Denalto can do, including ultra-wideband, RFID, and other things. So we understand that there are a whole bunch of different use cases for asset tracking. And this goes along with what I mentioned earlier, that together with Denalto, we are able to identify which technology, this is not just BLE, Wi-Fi, GNSS, and lower one that I mentioned here, but also ultra-wideband RFID um, uh, would be the most optimal technology for your specific use case. Why the optimal part is important? Because the more, the better accuracy you want to achieve in general, it will cost you much more, right? Uh, so th there is always this trade-off between accuracy and price. And that's why with uh, platforms like Cardinal, we can combine different technologies to make sure where you need the most accuracy it will that's the only place where you need to install more sophisticated equipment if you have an indoor place where you need sub one meter accuracy that's possible we can install one technology say Coupa, say something else uh, ultra, ultra wideband there and then if we go outside maybe you don't need sub one meter accuracy outdoors so you'll be fine with gps there and that's going to be a much inexpensive much more inexpensive solution um uh, compared to other uh offers next slide uh, just alex we have a question coming in there from justin thanks justin so you mentioned atex rated on you know some of these devices for hazardous areas any information about uh, class one div one or two Yes, there is information about this. So the class one div one certification is in progress. Uh, we're working on that. Please uh, contact us because we're trying to determine how many devices we would need to produce per year with mm -hmm. this certification. The, uh, this is important for us because uh, due to the way certification is set up, you know, uh, you, you have to pay different amounts of money depending on how many but, uh, how many trackers you plan to certify. So if you have some uh, requests, please contact Donaldo and they will contact me and we'll be able to give you more information about the status of the class one, div one, div two certifications. Great. Eight, so far for the compact tracker, we already have um, ADEX one and zero certifications, uh, which is the high uh, zone zero, zone zero is the highest out there. Um, so Technically, you will be able to use this in these types of environments already. It's just that extra, we need an extra piece of paper. Great. Thanks. Uh, next slide, please. Right. This is uh, also a good comparison of different technologies. It shows you that, uh, once again, there is a trade-off between the cost 
and the accuracy. That's something that you have to consider when it comes to your use case, when it comes to your project, and we'll be happy together with Benalto to advise you on what's going to work best for you in your specific use case. Next slide. Oh, that's it. That's it for uh, Actility uh, and Abbeyway. I uh, was very happy to uh, tell about those devices in our platform and our LNS. And now it's time for the long-awaited demo. I think yeah. I'm excited to see that. So I, with this, I pass the mic to Albert. Yeah, thanks, Alex. And if, if everyone can remember the smart badge that Alex had there, along with the industrial tracker and the compact tracker, we're going to actually bring a smart badge live onto the platform right now, uh, straight out of the box, commissioned on board to the platform, and then we're going to see it in action on the eMustering application. So one thing just to set a backdrop, you know, we talk about the dot in the map, we talk about the reporting, the stats, but there's actually uh, a bunch of tools required, especially when we're putting out, let's say, thousands of tags. So how do we commission all these tags? How do we turn them all on? How do we maintain them and manage them? And that's a very important part of the platform as we see it. It's more a kind of a deployment phase, but in reality, if we're you know a large oil refinery for a turnaround event and we need to mobilize 2,000 people for our turnaround event quickly, we do need these tools on the platform on mobile devices to bring everything up. And then we can uh, make sure all of our data is feeding into our KPI reports. If we're not getting all the data that we should be getting, we, we really want an alert. If we're getting some wrong information, especially when it comes to safety, and um, the integrity of the data is absolutely key. So that's just a bit of a backdrop. And the first thing I want to show really is um, how, we use, how we do this on a mobile device. So this is an iPhone. We're logging into Cardinal right now. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to scan the QR code uh, on a smart badge, which is around my neck there. So now that the QR code has been um, identified, the location is actually taken from the mobile device. So where I commissioned this device, um, it uses the GNSS on the phone. And this is the first step in bringing this device live on the platform. You can also enter an address. You can drag and drop a pin. And the next stage, so now we know that the device is coming onto the platform. We know where it's being turned on from. We know when it's being turned on. And the next thing we want to do, and especially this is possibly more so for assets, is we want to actually take a photo. So we want to make sure that the right badge, possibly on the right person, or that on an asset, that it was fixed correctly. So if this tag stops reporting, that we know um, how, how it was actually commissioned and turned on. So for example, with this device, 375F, or the last four characters, we can put in some description here. So subcontractor A and hazardous zone B. So he or she or they can um, have this context associated um, with their tag. Okay, so once this is all done, again, on my mobile app, and I know ruggedized um, iPads and tablets are used, which uh, this is obviously um, compatible with, we can check our group. We can see our 375F which is installed, it hasn't been seen yet. And now we're gonna go over to the web platform and see the tag that we just um, brought to life, actually moving around in an application. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop sharing for a second. And I'll reshare. So now we're over in Cardinal on my laptop right here. You, you can all see that okay? Yep. Right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at um, the device that we just commissioned. So I've got my I've got I, I've got my 375F. I want to go I actually want to go in here. It's now on the platform. It now exists as a tag with some association on it. And I want to add some metadata or some context to this tag. So by that, I mean, I want to define this tag as being associated with a person. So let's say I want to um, associate it with a person called Alice Waller. I'm gonna give Alice a staff ID, Alice at Donaldo demo.com. 
and we'll give her a phone number. One thing just about personnel tracking, which has come up, and I hope maybe there's a few questions around this. A lot of this personnel, uh, personal information is obviously very, very sensitive. And so there are cases where, for GDPR reasons and data protection, the personnel, uh, the, the name and the sensitive information will actually sit on a third party or a client system, and Cardinal enables the linking of, for example, a staff ID or some anonymous piece of information about this person to be linked to that personnel information. So if something goes wrong, we absolutely need to know it's Alice. But on Cardinal, possibly all you need to know is that it's um, staff number 146. Okay. So it's kind of anonymous is what you're saying. Absolutely. There are cases whereby the personnel information can sit on Cardinal. However, sometimes it's um, required that this information sits somewhere else. A cardinal doesn't mm -hmm. even need to know about it, just uses a, a unique identity. So I have a quick question on that. Sure. If, if, if that was my badge and I was out in the field and, you know, and Alex was saying that, you know, there's accelerometers and what have you, let's say I'm down and I push the button right now, the, the process comes up and says 375 is down. Emergency services does have the capability to go in there and find out that I'm diabetic. And you got to get emergency services out there and gives a little bit of history or identity to who I am. Is that is that how that all plays? That's correct. So basically APIs which are available on our platform for in for ingest and output of data are, are key. So you just mentioned emergency services there. They have an access control list on a third party system. Cardinal will talk to all of these systems and make sure the right piece of data is going to the right person at the right time. It's all powered by the location. Like you just said there, that person is down. That's a rule that will be triggered in Cardinal. It will then notify whoever. So the user will have set up, if, if man down happens, I need X and Y to be notified in this manner. And Cardinal will, will manage that. Does that, does that answer the question, Pat? Yes. OK, so now um, I just want to show where we've gone with that. So we've scanned our smart badge, our Abbeyway smart badge. We've taken an image. We've taken a location of where we actually stand it, which is here in the uh, in the office in Dublin in Ireland. We've now associated that with a person, and now we're going to see can we find that person. So obviously this is a, a dashboard on a site. Um, I'm not actually standing on a large site like this, but for the purposes of the demo, you can understand. Okay, so this is the emulsion application that Pat was talking about in. Just for those, uh, most people on here are probably quite aware, very like a fire drill type event. All of these different boxes are zones whereby we want people to enter and go and be counted in the event of an emergency. It's very important that they are. If they're not actually in any of these zones, that's an issue. They're going to be these red dots that you see. And I'm actually able to start and stop my e-mustering event on this, plat on this application, which can trigger you know, a loud hailer for a start or for a stop, I want to see how the email string event went. Was it efficient? Um, and did it work as intended? We've got our stats over here on the right-hand side. I can see how many people are in uh, which zone at any given time, and I can export these as well. What I'm really interested in is to find our smart badge. So I'm going to make sure none of these are filtered. I'm going to look for... Alice, who I've just found. So, okay, so we've got Alice Waller. This is our smart badge. I can now see where Alice is right now, but I wanna actually understand her movement over the last uh, period of time. So I can replay this data. You can see movement here over time. I can see the time spent in each zone. So what this is telling me it's a histogram, really, of the movement of this asset or person uh, around which zone. So they're either in no zone, which are, which are the blanks, or they're in this no access zone, which is an issue. So this can be aggregated if there are 20 or 30 people um, with this same type of behavior where they're, where they're entering a no access zone. That's where I want to get an alert to a shift, to a shift supervisor to possibly retrain some of these workers to make sure that there are extra barriers, that they're kept safe, et cetera. There's also um, a heat map. 
if we want to understand some dwell time. So where, you know, where have people stayed stationary for longer and when they're moving. So really that's just to kind of um, emphasize, you know, from the very start, right up until moving around an application like that, it's kind of, it's been used for this e-mustering application, but there are other examples. And in fact, I was going to um, just show you one more on asset tracking. So here we have our, our yard. And in fact, this is like a distribution center whereby you've got lots of traders, a uniform asset. We want to track our traders, make sure they don't sit on the yard for too long. They might get a fine if they do. Pat, you mentioned that. We want to understand, can the person who's working in the yard retrieve the right trailer at the right time and bring it to the right door? So now what I want to do is I want to take another device which is say 2879. And I know this from my, um, from my commissioning app. And what I wanna actually do is associate this, not with a person like I just did with Alice, but I want to associate it with a construction component. So if I call it MIG welder, and let's go. 63542 as our serial number. I now want to find my MIG welder on my yard. So over in my list of tags, I'm going to type in MIG welder and the one that grays up is this one. So we've got MIG welder 63542. We can see which zone it's in and I can go and retrieve that and I can be navigated to that. And if I want to know where the MIG welder has been, same thing as with Alice and our smart badge, but I get to understand where they've moved around zones. So if I zoom in here, I can see a bit more activity. Yeah. So we can see where it's moved. We've got our time spent in each zone. And we can do this, um, we can do this again as an aggregate. So I just wanted to show how you actually draw these zones. So the idea of Cardinal and these front ends is that they're very, very user uh, friendly, but they should be configured by users. So the end users know the use case better than we do. And for example, if they wanted to add in another zone, they simply draw one right here. Well, Albert, can you use that as, let's say we just had a, a a spill of a chemical. Could you, th that's the same thing. You're drawing that zone say, this is now a hazardous area, uh, put an alarm status out there and make sure people stay away. That's the same process. That's right. So what you're talking about there is a rule that you would define on the platform. So if there's a zone whereby this hazardous chemical sits and you're not supposed to enter, I wanna know when people enter and if they stay inside, for example, for more than 60 minutes. Now, what you can do on that asset itself, on the drum, the 55 gallon drum that you're talking about, is we can tag that drum and when it falls over, if it's not supposed to, that's gonna trigger the accelerometer on the Abbey Way right. tag. We will have a rule defined and the right person will get alerted at the right time. Right. I mean, we have send, e send email here as an example, but for example, that could send an alert to an existing workflow management uh, system. So I've got the zone that I just uh, drew here. Um, so that should give you an idea on the zones and the rules. So I'm just going to, I know we're coming up against time here. So I want to check some of the questions. We're talking about zones, are they set via the dashboard? And if they change at any point, for example, with the work sites change location. So it's all really um, up to the use case, the person who's defined the use case. Typically the way this uh, platform will work is you will have a starting point for an application, just like the asset pathfinder or navigator that Pat showed. You will then sit with the Donalto subject matter expert and make sure that the combination of elements, for example, on this front end suit your use case. We're not looking to develop dashboards from scratch. We're looking to actually aggregate all of these components to make sure they suit, you, they suit your use case, including the rules, the alarms, the heat maps and the, and, and the geozones. So um, I hope that's clear. There's another question coming in. 
Yeah, so this is based on Google Maps for outdoor. For indoor, we will ingest uh, floor plans, uh, blueprints, et cetera, and they, they, they can be superimposed on here or they can be their standalone individual um, floor plan. For example, with Abbeyway, uh, BLE is available indoor, and so you'll, you'll get your XY or lat long superimposed onto a floor plan there. So I just really wanted to thank everybody. I know we're coming right up onto 4 p.m. Irish time. It's probably a good bit earlier where, where a lot of people are. And um, just to recap, you know, critical location in the OGM market. It's quite broad. There are lots of different use cases. It's important, we feel, to have the right partners in place to deliver a solution that's not necessarily just one track, one tag, one dot in the map. There's more thought that's required. And um, we you know, really encourage anyone to reach out and talk to us. Uh, we have a trial program uh, along with Abbey Way, whereby we can get you set up pretty quickly. And we can even go through your use case with uh, experts like Pat. So um, any closing comments there, Pat or Alex? Well, I think you pretty well covered it, but I do want to uh, focus and highlight what you just said about having the proper partners. Uh, the Actility Abbey Way partnership is an awesome partnership for Donalto as a company. It provides us so much that we can actually help uh, the use cases and the applications in the field. But it's also important that we rely on partnerships and integrators and what have you. We can't be everywhere all the time for everyone. So we look for that, uh, that secondary partnership to help us to put these things in areas and different marketplaces for that matter, uh, that they have right. their core expertise and they're the boots on the ground. And just, a quick, just a quick comment from my side. So with the everyway trackers, they're kind of really Swiss army knives of IoT uh, lower one tracking. And there is a whole bunch of other features that they can do that can be integrated with the Denaltus platform, Cardinal platform. And with the Nalto, you would be able to use those features and explore additional use cases utilizing the same hardware. So it allows you for quick prototyping and doing quick MVPs to showcase to your management, to the stakeholders, to whoever. And the Nalto and XLC will be there to help you and support you. So uh, once again, thank you to everyone who participated. Thank you to Albert, Pat, everyone from the Naltus side. Uh, was a pleasure to be on this, to participate on this webinar. Yeah, that's great. And we're going to have a recording of this um, sent out to all of the invitees and to anyone else that they need to uh, send it on to. Please follow us on LinkedIn. There's lots of more information up there, lots of demos, um, lots of content. And just get in touch. Um, sales at the Nalto.com is a good uh, account to get us on. And Alex's information will be on the follow-up email as well. So if you need to get in touch with that, we actually. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, have a great Thank day. Thank you all. And we'll see you next time.